Hello and welcome to the Healthy Moving Podcast, the show designed to help you exercise less, but move more, so you will feel better. I am your healthy moving enthusiast, Jen Hoffman from stayathomeyoga.com. I'm so happy that you're here. This is the second part in a series where we're talking about thinking differently. Last time we talked about how we need to change how we think about our body. Today, we're changing how we think about exercise. Plus, I'll answer a listener question that I get all the time about how to motivate your kids to get moving with you. It's going to be a fun show. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so last week I shared that if we want to improve our health, I believe we first have to think differently. Specifically, we have to change how we think about two things. I trust you've spent some time over the last few days looking at how you think about your body, and hopefully you're beginning to see just how amazing your human machine is. Now it's time to change how you think about something else. If you want to improve your health, you also have to think differently about exercise. There are two problems with the way most of us think about exercise. First of all, in our culture, we want to compartmentalize our movement. We want to get it done in three to five sessions a week, and many of us have trouble even committing to that. But here's the thing. Exercise, even one hour a day, five days a week, doesn't decrease your risk for disease if you spend the rest of your day sitting. There's a phenomenal new book out on this topic, and I'm not just saying that because the author is one of my teachers. In Move Your DNA, biomechanist Katie Bowman says, exercise does not always make every part of us better. What can be good for the mind might be hard on the knees. What can be nice for the waistline can cause your pelvic floor to fail. What can serve as a mental escape now can cause mental anguish down the road. We can do better than exercise. We need to do more than exercise. Our bodies require more movement nutrition than exercise, as we do it, provides. I'll provide a link to Katie's book in the show notes for episode two at healthymovingpodcast.com. Pick it up today. It will help transform how you think about exercise. Now here's the second thing. The other problem with the way we think about exercise is this. Most people I know exercise to change how they look. Your motivation matters. Why you do something directly impacts the outcome you'll achieve. And exercising with the motivation of changing your appearance almost always fails. Here's why. And this might come as a surprise. You don't really want to look differently. I know you think you want flatter abs, smaller hips, more definition in your arms. The list goes on and on. But those things are not the magical key to happiness and success that you think they are. Friends, you don't want to look differently. You want to feel differently. And with good reason. How you feel is the earliest indicator of your health on the cellular level. We should move to improve how we feel, not how we look. Does your movement program make you, all of you, feel better? Does it give you energy, help resolve body aches and pains? Does it improve your sleep at night? Does it assist with managing your stress? When we improve how we feel, everything else just kind of falls into place. Moving throughout your day to improve how you feel is a lot easier than it sounds. If you'd like some assistance with this, head on over to stayathomeyoga.com slash support and join our next challenge group. Okay, I'll be back in just a moment with this week's question and answer. One of my students, Kim, in Indiana, wrote me earlier this week to ask about how she can motivate her kids to get moving with her. 
I actually wrote an entire post about this, and I'll provide a link to it in the show notes. But here's the bottom line. Our kids learn about movement by watching us. If we want to raise healthy kids, we have to model healthy habits. And just as we've been talking about the past two weeks, that starts with changing how we think. Let's raise a generation of kids that act from somewhere deep within their body and soul. Let's teach them to have eyes that see beauty, health, and vitality flow from the inside out. Let's show them that we can evaluate our health by listening to our body, not by looking in a mirror. Then have fun moving with your kids. Take family walks. Invite your kids to do yoga with you. Allow them to play and explore alongside you. I'll provide a link in the show notes to some kids' yoga classes at stayathomeyoga.com that will help inspire some fun and movement. But the yoga breaks are also great to do as a family. Move with your kids. Model healthy movement. Model healthy thinking. And we'll change the next generation. I want to just once again say thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed the show and you found this information helpful, please head over to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review. You can find the show notes and links to join me every month for a free live class over at healthymovingpodcast.com. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on air or you want to tell me a little bit about your healthy moving story, call me at 201-580-MOVE or you can just click the leave me a message link on the show notes. It would just make me so happy to hear from you. As always, help me start this healthy moving revolution by telling your friends about the show. There are Facebook and Twitter links right on the site to help make it super easy for you. I am so grateful for you. Have an amazing week and keep moving, friends.